Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build your own virtualization server for less than 350 bucks. So, uh, quick sidebar, I'm showing you Amazon. I don't. It doesn't matter where you buy it from. I mean, just get a good price and that can be bought from anybody. So, go for the best price. And the prices that I have here on my uh, little cheat sheet, these are kind of just ballpark prices in the, you know, so more or less, depending on where you shop, depending on where you get it from, uh, you can you can pretty much uh, find better prices maybe. So uh, my virtualization server, what did I want it for? So I'm building, or I have built a security lab, which has about, right now, 12 servers. About five of them are running at, as we speak. Uh, it's a 24-7 operation. I never shut it off, but I'm really the only one using it. So what I wanted is low power, and uh, you know stability, reliability, things like that. So and uh, I'm not going to be stressing it too much. So that's the reason I bought this uh, dual core Pentium here. Uh, it's you know three gigahertz, uh, three megs of cache, but uh, so that that's decent. But uh, you know it's 53 watts, so that's good, and it's uh, lower price. I don't feel the need to spend a hundred dollars on this, and I haven't seen it really spike up to a hundred percent. Except if I was like uh, installing two servers at the same time uh, with another server or two running in the background. So, uh, you know, as long as there's only you or a couple other people using the server, not for anything too real intensive, you don't have to go and get like a i7 or an i5 or even an i3, I would argue. So that's why I bought this dual core here. Okay. Next thing, uh, something that is important is the 16 gigs of RAM. So your other option, realistically speaking, is eight, and uh, you know, remember you you have your hypervisor, which uh, VMware ESXi, if you're going to use that, takes up about maybe 200 megs. Uh, Zen server takes a gig, so think about that if you're going to be using Zen. Maybe you don't have a choice. We'll get to that. But uh, so you know, you do want to be. Uh, stock up on the RAM. I'd say this is more important for a virtualization server than, uh, you know, than the processor itself. So, 16 gigs, I would say, is probably pretty good. Uh, you know, remember you're, you have like say a, a 200 megs or a gig of RAM, but then you're installing your operating systems, each with a gig or two of RAM themselves on top of that. So, the more RAM, the more virtual machines. So, uh, seventy dollars. That's about. You know, just looking, that's about the ballpark rate for, for some of these, and uh, and that's that's that. So let's move on to the motherboard. What you just have to do is remember to match up the socket of your processor with the motherboard here. So uh, the G3260 processor is an LGA 1150, and uh, and I bought that. I budgeted 65 for this. I bought a cheaper one. It was like 42. And I mean, it didn't it hasn't died on me or anything, but it didn't come up with any it didn't come with any USB 3.0, uh, you know. So I would say, you know, your motherboard is. I mean, these are all important components, but you know, I'd I'd go a little more. Like I said, sixty five dollars is a good good ballpark for the uh, motherboard there. I mean, other than that, it's a motherboard. So like you know, you have uh, different types of SATA, like your USB types and things like that. So. You know, the more you pay, the more features you'll get. So whether you need them or not is another story. I mean, I honestly I haven't used USB 3.0 on my uh, on any of my stuff, really. Uh, so so it just depends. Uh, the other thing, one thing is um, power supply. If you're going to be running yours 24/7, you want to get a good power supply that's uh, one of those rated, like a bronze rated, yeah, bronze right there or something. So uh, that's just my suggestion, and I'd spend about, you know, you can get one probably 400 watts or even less, really, if you think about it, depending on how many hard drives and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I'd just say around 50 bucks, and uh, go with a good good company that you know, like, uh, so for example, I went and I had a leftover power supply when I built mine, and what, four months after it was... Uh, working, I come back from work, and I find that the uh, the 
the server was just like in an endless reboot loop because the power supply had died, like one of the parts that was, so that wasn't good. And, uh, you know, I actually, I bought a Corsair, but it was a 400 watt, and that was about $50 or something like that. So, you know, don't buy the cheapest power supply, because remember, you're going to be running at 24-7, probably. So, uh, there's that, like I said, $50 budget is about right. Hard drives, depending on what you're going to use it for, if you want to go SSD, knock yourself out, uh, or you know you can get a terabyte. In mine, I have two single terabytes, and I have uh, one 512 gig, so it just depends on what you're using it for. But I mean, I would just say you know if just a plain vanilla virtualization server, just start out with a terabyte hard drive. That's probably good enough, and then you can add on, move on, whatever depending on your needs. So hard drive there, 50 bucks. Uh, case. This is another thing like the power supply, I would say, where it is good to get a better quality one uh, and maybe spend a little bit more money on it. So the first case I bought was like $35, maybe not even that, and it just turned out to be a piece of junk, and I ended up buying this Corsair carbide one. And this has turned out, worked out pretty well. I bought the one with the fancy schmancy window here, which I would rather have just bought the silent one but you know I didn't want to spend the extra 10 bucks so uh, you know the, just remember the case is important all this stuff is important but uh, for example the one that I the first one that I bought it didn't even have it had the hard drive caddies but I think it only had like two and right now I have three hard drives in it and I could have technically you know rigged it somewhere else and this and that but get a good case you don't have to worry about that stuff it should be already there for you. Uh, you know, for this one, you already have four hard drive uh, bays with the with the nice little slide and things. So uh, that's it for the. I mean, that's it for the server itself. You just throw those things, uh, put it together in the case, boot it up, and uh, you're not done, obviously, but you're built. So uh, one thing I put as an optional is just a network interface card. So $20, you can get them cheaper, but it doesn't hurt to be conservative with budgeting. So like I said, you know, you can buy, you know, depending on what you want. If you want a second uh, NIC or not, it kind of depends on your purposes. Mine, it's actually very good that I have a second NIC because I can have my home network connected to my virtualization server and then the virtualization server also connected to another uh, network that handles some of my other security things. So, twenty dollars, really, ten. Uh, yeah, I haven't had any problems with, with uh, you know, NIC failure. Even like TP-Link, I've bought a couple of these, and they're all right. So it's kind of just what you're going to use it for and things like that. So uh, without the, without the uh, network interface card, you're at sitting at three hundred and forty-five dollars. With the NIC, you you probably still be about three hundred and fifty if you get. Uh, you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good prices from these places. The only thing with some of these things, like for example, the NIC, just make sure if if it's a PCI Express, make sure you have the PCI Express slot. Uh, you know, if you have if it's just a regular PCI slot, then just make sure that you have that space. You don't want to be buying things that aren't gonna fit your motherboard, which things to consider. So that's it. That's all the hardware. You put all those in the case, and you're good to go. The only other thing uh, for the for the virtualization is the hypervisor which there's a free version of Zen server and there's a free version of VMware ESXi so you can get either one of them I use Zen server right now and the only reason I use Zen server is because I tried ESXi and it didn't uh, it didn't recognize my network interface card Zen server did you know hence or thus I use Zen server so and then I'm sure you have a couple USBs hanging around and you can just throw that in. So other than that, you know, you can just use your any monitor that you have, even your own monitor for uh, just hook it up when you install Zen or VMware for the first time and get that information. And then all you do, you just connect to it through the web interface, through the IP address. And then you're, you're on there, you're running from there. So uh, that's it. 350 bucks, you got a virtualization server, and you can do some damage with it. So that's all I had in this video, and stay tuned for future videos.